Good Monday morning, Utah. We're coming up on 647 on this Monday morning. We'll begin with the forewarn radar. We're out there this morning. We do have a few spotty showers, mainly around Nephi, just to the west of Nephi, and then around Cedar City and areas down to the southeast, including portions of Kane and Garfield County. The chance for wet weather will be increasing once we get into this afternoon, aided by some moisture from what is still left of Hillary. It is no longer a tropical storm, but it is now a post-tropical system, which means it has lost its tropical characteristics. Still a low pressure. Will be fizzling away as we go throughout the rest of the day, but we still have plenty of that monsoonal and tropical moisture in place, and you'll actually get a very good perspective on that just by looking at the water vapor. Upper level low pressure to our west, upper level high pressure to our east, and you can actually see that moisture coming in from the south. So for today and really over the next several days, we'll be looking at a good chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms statewide. Some of the showers and thunderstorms that we see today could produce some torrential rain and stretching from the central mountains, including eastern portions of Juab and Millard counties, all the way down. Down through southwestern and south central Utah, there is a flood watch that's in effect through this evening as heavy rain could produce flash flooding, especially in slot canyons, dry washes, burn scars, low lying areas and in urban areas as well. There's even a chance that this flood watch does get extended through tomorrow as plenty of that moisture will be staying in place through our Tuesday as well. Not only will we see scattered showers and thunderstorms statewide with that flood watch that we have in place, we also are going to see strong winds across the state stretching from the Utah Idaho line all the way down through Iron County. There's a high wind warning that is currently in effect, which will continue through nine o'clock this evening as we could see southerly wind sustained anywhere from 25 to 40 miles per hour with some gusts upwards of 60 miles per hour. Those strongest winds that we're going to see across the Beehive State today will be found in the western portion of the state. However, it is going to be windy across the state and you'll see these wind gusts as we go through today, maybe even gusting as high as 43 miles per hour in Salt Lake before those winds gradually begin to diminish as we head into tonight. So those are winds outside of any showers and thunderstorms, but thunderstorms today will be able to produce some very strong winds and along and just east of the I-15 corridor, there is is a low end marginal risk of severe storms. So again, that's a level one out of five, a small risk, but it is still a risk as showers and thunderstorms that develop could produce some wind gusts upwards of 60 miles per hour and also could produce torrential rain. The best chance for wet weather today is mainly going to be from central Utah into western Utah. If you're in the eastern half of the state, your chance of wet weather is lower, but it's not necessarily zero. So no matter where you are across the state today, if you have plans to be outside, keep your eyes to the sky and avoid those backcountry hikes, especially in slot canyons, dry washes and near burn scars. Let's go ahead and begin the future cast at eight o'clock this morning. The future cast pinpointing those showers that we currently have in the southwestern portion of the state. Notice though what happens as we approach midday, those showers and thunderstorms begin to bubble up close to the I-15 corridor, especially starting off first in the high terrain. Then as we go from midday through the afternoon, those showers and thunderstorms that develop in the high terrain could then move down to the valley, showing a very active afternoon across the Beehive State, especially in the central half of the state with that moisture that continues to funnel in. Even as we go into tonight with the loss of the daytime heating, typically we've been telling you as we lose the daytime heating, the chance for showers and thunderstorms goes down. That won't be the case tonight. We'll hold on to a good chance for those passing showers and thunderstorms through the overnight hours even starting Tuesday morning with likely showers and thunderstorms across portions of the Beehive State, all for that wet weather potential to ramp up even more as we go throughout our Tuesday. And we'll be looking at more potential for very heavy rain and a few strong thunderstorms as well. In the meantime, here's what it currently looks like in Cedar City as we look off towards the east and we look at some rain off in the distance where it's currently sitting at 67 degrees in Cedar City. In northern Utah, we're actually being treated to a pretty sunrise. That's the view from Powder Mountain looking lovely as our temperatures out the door are mainly ranging at this point in the 60s and 70s. By this afternoon, daytime highs for most across the state, 70s and 80s. For those of you in eastern Utah, you're not going to see as much in the way of wet weather, so your daytime highs will be a little bit closer to your seasonal averages. Outside of any wet weather today and when spots when we don't have wet weather where it's a little bit calm, you can expect partly to mostly cloudy skies as we get to 89 in Salt Lake and a daytime high of 85 in St. George. In St. George, we're going to have a good chance for showers and thunderstorms over the next several days as daytime highs mainly range in the 80s, potentially getting back to 90 degrees on Wednesday. And then with lowering wet weather potential by this weekend, daytime highs start to climb into the upper 90s. And along the Wasatch Front, scattered showers and thunderstorms the next couple of days with highs in the 80s, keeping a pretty good chance through the work week before that moisture begins to dwindle by this upcoming weekend as daytime highs eventually ease back up to the low 90s by Sunday.